Good afternoon and thank you for joining today's presentation, Chapter Leaders Webinar 2018 Chapter Affiliation Agreement, presented by CLMA President Jane Hermanson and 2017 Chapter Advisor Joe Keery. As a reminder to all attendees, all lines have been muted. Please use the Q&A function of this platform to raise any questions to our speakers or if you encounter any technological issues. Questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. Now I will pass it off to Jane to begin today's presentation. Well, thank you so much, Erica, and hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you know, we are in the process of implementing some changes to our CLMA chapters. We held a webinar, webinar back in October, and we've had a number of one-on-one -on -one conversations with each of our chapter leaders over the past two months. So today what we're going to do is review that initial webinar, dive deeper into some of the specific questions that have arisen from you, our chapter leaders, and to explain in more detail related to the chapter affiliation agreement. And Erica, you can go to the next slide, please. And I want to let you know that today's webinar, as well as the October webinars, they are recorded and they're going to be available online for you. So Erica, you can go to the next slide, please. So I think that before we go too far, it's, it's really helpful to just kind of know how we got to where we're at. And Erica, you can go to the next slide, please. And our history has been rife with some kind of interesting, interesting events. And I think that when we look at this particular chapter activity, change is difficult and it might be might feel particularly difficult with this situation because of our history. And we know that in the past, there were some issues with CLMA going way back to more than 10 years ago when our office in Philadelphia was struggling. And it continued with some service issues five to seven years ago. However, Smith Buckland has really stepped up and worked hard to stabilize the staff and the support. And I believe in the last three to four years, they've been very consistent and have been providing excellent service for the chapters. Many of you remember that time during the, during especially the Philadelphia office and the early days with Smith Buckland because you weren't getting as much support as you needed to keep your chapter going. You took some measures to be self-sustaining. And what's happened is that now we've arrived at a point where the service is stable and we are asking you to reassess what your expectations are of service. From the Smith Buckland's perspective, the customer service team has stabilized. And with Abigail's leadership, the tremendous support from Jenna, Patrick, and Erica, we feel that customer service is substantially better than it used to be. This is a really fantastic team to work with. At the board level, I want you to know that we have adapted our culture and we are working hard to provide relevant value for all of our CLMA members. Some of our prior initiatives were focused on maintaining the status quo and really surviving from day to day. And what we found is that we were wasting a lot of time and some valuable resources and we were not growing as a professional association. Laboratory professionals have choices in professional associations, and why should they choose CLMA? As a board, we have answered this question, and we have worked hard to align our strategy accordingly. Personally, I am really excited about the changes that we've made, and I think we're making some great progress, and we want that progress to be viewed and appreciated by you all as well. In order to continue to accomplish this great progress, we need to be cohesive and aligned. And I speak for staff and board, in order to help CLMA continue to improve, we need your support and commitment. Your commitment to work with CLMA to achieve our goals at the international level, which in turn will benefit our members at the chapter level. So you can go to the next slide, please, Erica. So I think it comes down to understanding what the, the role is for the chapter, what the role is for the board, and what the role is for the, for the actual uh, CLMA members and, and for the executive office as well. So let's start by reviewing the mission of a chapter. And this mission of the chapter was revealed to you at the October webinar. The mission of a CLMA chapter is to foster networking, education, and a sense of belonging 
for CLMA members. When our members talk about their chapter activity and their chapter experience, they talk about that sense of belonging and that's the piece that means so much to them. So again, the mission of the chapter is to foster networking education and that sense of belonging for CLMA members. Being a CLMA member has many, many benefits from our high quality education, the body of knowledge, our dedicated advocacy efforts to our local chapters. Involvement in a CLMA chapter is a member benefit. The role of the chapter is to create that local experience for the CLMA members, communicating and demonstrating CLMA's value at the local level. The chapter's role is not to recruit or to have large attendance at their meetings. It's about the experience that our members realized when they, when they participate in local CLMA activities. And they share in that experience and they develop relationships. Again, to provide networking, education, and the sense of belonging for CLMA members. By extension, CLMA chapters are part of CLMA. They're not separate organizations. And I think that that's been something that some groups have been con uh, confused about. So I just want to make sure that you understand that is the, the, that's the structure. Chapters are part of CLMA. And our desire is that the changes that we're making are going to establish a new relationship with our chapters, one that is a true, true partnership. This is not intended to be a we versus they mentality. We're all in this together. And we do need each other to help make a solid CLMA organizational experience and make the largest impact in our industry. And I think because members have choices, working together has never been more important than it has now. We are working with other associations given the current political climate, climate in the industry. We're working on PANA and other things like that. And we're struggling with the commoditization of our treasured laboratories and challenges. We have challenges with staffing and we have to continue to make sure that we have executive leadership support. These are the things that CLMA is focusing on today. And we need your help to make sure that we're able to accomplish all of those things. So why are we having this conversation today? Erica, you can go to the next slide. The CLMA board has recognized for several years that we need to make sure that our chapters are protected and aligned in how they operate. This is an important step in a process that has really taken us many years of research, review, conversations with lawyers, and many hours of development work to, to come up with a plan for success. And that's at the board level. At the chapter level, we've also heard your struggles. You're tired. This is hard work from day-to-day -day management to growing your chapter in order to create meaningful experiences for our CLMA members. And in order to help you facilitate that growth, that change starts from the top. And that includes our, st our staff and the CLMA board of directors. So what are we doing? We're working on the administrative experience. That's the hard work that you do for your chapter. And it needs to be more efficient. And it's no denying that this is a lot of heavy lifting. So staff is working on making that easier for you and taking more of that on themselves. However, they can't do it alone. And in order to accomplish this, Really, we need your help. And if you think about it, we have to follow rules and procedures in our labs every day. In the lab, if we have inconsistent processes, what happens? We have errors and we have inefficiencies. If we ran our labs without standard operating procedures and we didn't comply with the regulatory and compliance requirements, what would happen? We wouldn't be open for long. And even worse, we could potentially harm patients, we could be sued, and we could harm our overall organization. That may seem a little bit dramatic, but that is honestly the position that we're in here with CLMA at the international level and with the chapter level. And we need to be working together instead of as separate units. And this is where we're at. I know that change isn't easy. And as an association, we've actually gone through a lot of changes ourselves. And we have now reached the point where we're able to and ready to shore up our activities and create consistency, enhance quality in the member experience. And, and in order to do that, CLMA needs your help. And I need your help. 
So thank you for your support. And I'm going to turn it over to Joe now so that he can review the affiliation agreement and the details attached to that. Thank you, Jane, and, and good afternoon and good morning to everyone who's attending. Now that the president has recapped our history and our relationship between our chapters and our executive office, I want to take some time and go through each of these chapters, uh, each of these changes expeditiously, but also to allow you time to raise questions and increase the discussion at the end of the presentation. So if you go to the next slide, please. To begin, on October 5th of this, this year, Jane and I hosted the first chapter leader webinar to discuss the changes to chapter processes, events, and membership, which will take effect on January 1st. You and your chapter leadership are invited to view the CLMA chapter on YouTube to see the recording of that webinar, as well as share the recording of this webinar. At that time, on October 5th, we discussed much of what we're going to cover today. And after that, chapters were contacted by the leadership, and several raised some valid concerns which have been addressed and will be addressed today. So next slide, please. Let's begin by covering the specific elements of the new chapter affiliation agreement, the 2018 changes. As Jane mentioned, just as each of our organizations are affiliated with one or more accreditation or regulatory bodies and must comply with them, so CLMA and our chapters need a more formalized affiliation agreement. Now this affiliation agreement allows a shared understanding of that relationship between both parties and a clear understanding of both the obligations and the roles of each. It contains the expectations of the behaviors and actions as a chapter and as an organization and what CLMA commits to do for the chapters. This is truly an example of a bilateral affiliation and a joint partnership. Now let's look at each of the five changes in a little more detail. We'll start with chapter events, which is the next slide. So beginning in 2018, chapter educational events are a CLMA member only benefit. Now this is a recognition of this, uh, these outstanding events as a reflection of that value of CLMA membership. This high quality professional education, which is presented at the local level for our members, a true benefit of membership. Now, CLMA events, which are strictly of a social nature or are specifically designed to recruit potential members to the organization, are exempted from this change because we still want to promote some of those other value elements of CLMA membership, specifically the networking collaboration, the opportunity for upward mobility and job searching through social and recruitment events. Only CLMA members may attend a chapter standalone event held by that chapter. So this, uh, the definition of the chapter standalone event, it's an educational event that is only provided by that chapter of CLMA without partnership of any other organization. It provides education that is it is not strictly a social event. It is only open to CLMA members and it provides a CLMA opportunity for a CLMA membership and registration bundle option for non-members who wish to attend. That way we maintain that exclusivity of a CLMA member only event and establishing that value. And finally, it will provide CEUs only to CLMA members. In the case of PACE providers, chapters must still maintain their own provider status, but may only provide those PACE credits to CLMA members. Now, a chapter may host a chapter joint meeting or conference in which an event is held in partnership with another organization. And in that case, this joint meeting or conference shall consist of an educational event which is provided by the chapter in partnership with another organization provides education, that is, it is not strictly a social event, and this is open to CLMA members and non-members, but provides CEUs to only to CLMA members. And again, in the case of PACE providers, the chapters must maintain their own provider status, but may only provide those PACE credits to CLMA members. Next slide, please. 
the chapter names as part of our value proposition branding in 2018 chapter names and logos will be standardized to read the blank chapter of CLMA chapter logos will also be standardized and a copy of that logo template will be included in your chapter affiliation agreement for your review chapter standardized chapter names allows for a consistent brand identification for all parties we don't expect a min, anything more than a minimal impact to chapters with this change the next change is the incorporation status and as jane mentioned as legal separate entities chapters will need to provide either proof of current incorporation in a state or become incorporated in order to maintain their status as a clma chapter now, while we project this to be completed within 90 days of signing that affiliation agreement, we realize there may meet, need to be some flexibility. The executive office, specifically Eric or our representative, will contact chapters individually in 2018 regarding your incorporation status. If you have any questions specifically on this process, please reach out to Eric at the executive office at your earliest opportunity. Next slide chapter membership dues and again chapter dues will remain an option from chapters but if chapter dues are assessed they will be assessed at a standard twenty dollars per person per year rate starting january 1st 2018. now when 2018 dues if they were collected before january 1st the 2017 rate for chapter dues in effect at that time was applied and this was a deliberate decision by both the executive office and the board to hold off on altering individual chapter due structures early so to avoid confusion by membership and to do all of our chapter changes simultaneously rather than in a piecemeal fashion. And finally, the chapter service pack fee. These will be invoiced at the conclusion of this webinar and starting in 2018, it will be pre-billed for the upcoming membership year just like clma membership dues which is an organizational best practice across organizations in different industries these are due to the executive office no later than february 12th 2018 and remember that the chapter service pack fee provides for those administrative expenses to operate as a professional association it provides for our learning management system for advocacy ad activities on behalf of our profession membership, recruitment support, and everything else you enjoy as a member of CLMA, as you see on our website and social media. Next slide, please. So what can you expect moving forward? Following today's webinar, you'll receive an email for your 2018 chapter affiliation agreement and your service pack fee invoice. These will be sent to, to your treasurer or secretary on file, but please, if you don't receive it within 48 hours of this webinar, contact Erica at the executive office as soon as possible. You have her email there, and I'm sure everyone knows her phone number as well. That signed chapter affiliation agreement and service pack fee are due back to the executive office by Monday, February 12th. And the question is, what if we don't decide, to, if we decide not to sign it? Well, if we don't receive the agreement and fee by that date, we have the right to no longer recognize you as a chapter and may be dissolved. And it's not something we want to do. So let's work together and get this accomplished in a timely fashion. And we've had these agreements before. So what's really different about this? Well, in the past, CLMA had multiple affiliation agreements for each chapter. This new agreement replaces all those other agreements and will have a standardized one signed by every chapter for every year. By signing this agreement, you agree to all the terms of the agreement and agree to fulfill all terms within 90 days. And as chapter leaders, you're accountable for that deadline. So separate communication and instruction will be sent to those chapters regarding incorporation processes, because we did agree that that would be a possibly uh, consume more time than that 90 days but at least sign that affiliation agreement, adhere to the terms and conditions, and then begin that incorporation process if you are not already incorporated as soon as possible. And next slide. So your final steps would be that sign the affiliation agreement, adhere to the terms and conditions. 
become incorporated or renew your incorporation status with the executive office within 90 days of signing the agreement. And again, we have some flexibility there. And on a happier note, be prepared to attend our CCL Summit and Knowledge Lab 2018 at Long Beach Convention Center in Long Beach, California. And those are the dates, May 5th for the summit, and Knowledge Lab will be May 6th through 9th. At this time, I'd like to pass it back to Jane for some concluding comments, and I await your comments and questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you, Erica, for your wonderful navigation uh, talents today. I just want to conclude by saying in my 30 plus year professional career, I've learned one thing. Change is constant, and especially in the lab. I can't tell you how much change I've seen. And what I have found is that things change, processes change, but people don't change. People transition. And as, le as leaders, we have the opportunity to set the tone as our members adapt to this change. As we've discussed, CLMA has reached the point where change is necessary. We need to create consistency and enhance the quality of our member experience at the national level, the chapter member, chapter level, and the member level. And in order to do this effectively, we need your help. So please know you're not alone. All of us, Joe, Erica, CLMA staff, your board of directors, me. We are all available to you as we implement this change, and I want to thank you personally for your support. And with that, I want to wish you a happy holidays. I look forward to seeing you in Long Beach in May, and I think we actually have quite a bit of time for questions, so I will turn it back to Erica. Wonderful, and thank you, Jane and Joe, for today's presentation. Um, at this point, we would like to open it up for um, any questions um, that you may have. Um, and we do already have our first question. Um, the first question would be, how will these changes benefit my chapter? Jane, would you like to speak to that question? Sure, I was getting off of mute, sorry about that. So how will the changes benefit your chapter? And again, it comes down to creating that chapter experience. And if the mission of the chapter is to make sure that we're providing a sense of belonging for CLMA members and supporting the, the, the fact that involvement in the CLMA chapter is a member benefit, what we have found is that so often people think that they're in, they are CLMA members because they've come to a couple of chapter events when indeed they are not members. So how will this benefit your chapter? It will benefit your chapter by having stronger, more engaged people <coughs> attending these meetings. And Joe may have something that he wants to add as well. Right, and I think it goes back, thanks Jan, I think it goes back to the concept of member value. What value do you get from becoming a member of CLMA? You get the professional education, which is offered generally at the chapter level with the exclusion of uh, Knowledge Lab. You get the camaraderie, you get the networking, you get the uh, job searching opportunities. You get all of those benefits by being a member. And by holding the, exec the uh, educational events as a member only benefit, it encourages individuals who are naturally gonna come to those high quality events anyway to make that commitment and say, I want to be part of this organization. Great, thank you both so much. Um, we did receive another question, and the question is, who should be contacted to change board membership emails in each state chapter? Uh, this is a great question. So all of that information can go directly to me. Again, this is um, Erica Bruning. Um, I am your main point of contact here at the executive office. Uh, my email was made available here on these slides and it's also available on CLMA.org. Um, we do have a change in chapter leadership form that I would ask that you fill out um, when the time comes that your board is um, turning over to a new group of people um, that is both available on the chapter leaders group on CLMA.org and it's available to be emailed um, out upon request as well. Um, so the best way to get that information changed over is to fill out the form and then email it to me directly so that I can update distribution lists and make sure that we're working with the most up-to-date information. 
Okay, our next question. Many non-members of CLMA consistently attend my chapter's educational events. Will non-members of CLMA no longer be permitted to attend local chapter educational events? Joe, would you feel comfortable taking this question? Yep, definitely. Yes, as part of, again, that brand unity, non-members will not be able to attend educational events at the chapter level unless you, well, you can offer them the option to become members and then attend the meeting. And that's a, a good way for you both to increase your, your membership and your penetration in the market in your area, and also to allow them to continue to enjoy the high quality education. But they cannot remain non-members and attend those meetings, at least for chapter standalone events. If it's in partnership with another organization, that's a different story, but that was covered on the slides. Great, thank you, Joe. Our next question states, part of the problem with getting new persons to join CLMA has been the cost of membership. Can you speak to this concern? Jane, will you take this question? Sure, and I think that when I've had, I've had this conversation with nearly everyone who, who we've talked with, because that is a concern, and we understand that, that uh, not everybody has discretionary funding to, to pay for CLMA. However, number one, for me, I have never had anyone else pay my CLMA membership, and it is the single most valuable professional investment I have ever made into my career. And I will stand by that. It is something that I realize that return on my investment every every year and I encourage any of you you're obviously members you're getting something out of that membership articulate what that value of that membership means for you and then if you really step back and you think about it what is the cost of membership the full membership is $195 how many people are getting Starbucks every day if you give up one Starbucks a day that is the same as your CLMA membership for an entire year at the 195 rate we we have the entry level rate at $95 and we also have the rate of $125 that does not include the, the, the online education packages. So there are other affordable options for people. So I would encourage you to not say, oh yeah, I understand, it's tough all over, but to really help people appreciate what the value of spending that money is. And I honestly believe that you get out of something as much as you put into it. And from my perspective, CLMA has has rewarded me significantly beyond in my career how much I've put into it myself. So I I can't say enough for that investment. And I would encourage each of you to really search your souls and see what it is that your membership is giving for you. And then you can become our best ambassadors out there and share that word with others. If I might, what you just, how you ended there, you need to be that ambassador. You need to tell your story of why you're a member of CLMA. I tell individuals that I speak to that I, the people I've met alone is 10 times what I pay for my membership. Just the, the friendships I've made, the collegial relationships, the ability to go to folks for questions or for, for advice and, and to bounce ideas off. It's something that, you know, while my employer, as Jane's does not pay me for that, does not reimburse it. It's something that as a professional, I'm committed to do for both myself and the profession. So you're the best ambassadors for CLMA membership. Great, thank you both. Um, our next question deals with resources for chapter leaders during this transition. Um, what resources are available to chapter leaders to help them make decisions for their chapter during this transition? Joe, can you answer this question? Certainly. One of my roles as the chapter advisor is to work with chapters and, and work with boards. And I know Jane, myself, uh, Christy Nickel, we, we're able to get on the phone and, and actually talk with chapters and, and work through questions and answers if you have specific ones to uh, clarify. We're hoping that this webinar is is producing a lot more clarity about the changes, because as Jane said, change is very difficult for anyone to work through, but we're here for you. The executive office is always here for you. And uh, if you have uh, questions or needs, I can provide my email as well. And uh, it, it's always better to go through Erica, that way we have a standardized um, 
like a, a funnel or a conduit to uh, get questions to us. But we're here to help you both articulate it to your boards and to explain the specifics and answer your questions when you need it. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for your um, answers to these questions here. Um, with that, we are going to conclude today's presentation. Thank you to all the attendees who joined to ask questions um, to our presenters. Thank you to Jane and Joe for um, your presentation and your work um, on this project as well. So uh, with that, the webinar is now concluded. A recording will be made available um, online within the next 48 hours. If you do have any additional questions that you did not get to ask on today's presentation or that you think about in the coming weeks, please email me, ebruning at clma.org, um, and I'd be happy to get those questions answered and for them on to Jane and Joe as well. Thank you all, and have a great day. Happy holidays. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.